Hello, this is the hardcore legend Mick Foley, and you are listening to Putting You Over. Yeah. Go on. Yes, there she you is. Need to introduce. There you oh, go. Oh, she wanted. To, is that was I supposed to do that? Did you? Would you tell her I was going to do the the intro? No, you said you were working I on. I know. This. I'm just so <laughs> bad at it. Well, you know. I'll do one of those cool things all the podcasters do, and I'll like give her a great intro before the show, like they all do. I heard Tristan Law did it; was great. Um, welcome, Ariel. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I didn't want to interrupt. So oh, please! I was like letting you go. <laughs> no, you can interrupt if you let me go. I'll I'll just I'll start doing top five. Who <laughs> I don't know top five tag team partners for Jerry Lawler. We could do those. <laughs> uh, that that wouldn't not be fun. Uh, I appreciate the time the, the, that you're giving us tonight. And uh, oh, thank you for having me. And you were talking about Wands of Vision. I literally just finished the last episode right before I jumped oh, on here, so I'm uh, very excited too for tomorrow's episode. <laughs> there's there's a uh, this this small TV behind me which you can't really see on the screen, mm. and uh, I usually always play something unique during the show. And I was going to play WandaVision episodes on it, but the way things are hooked up at the bar, I wasn't able to get Disney Plus there. So you'll just, you'll have to watch Paige play Dead by Daylight. So, okay. (laughs) If if you can say, okay. Uh, But yeah, WandaVision, man. How great is that? Are you a big Marvel fan? I am. And like, I was, you know, kind of behind on the movie. So I rewatched some like the newer movies this week. And then now I just rewatched Full on Division and I'm like, yeah. I could appreciate it so much more. And yeah, I always loved Marvel growing up too. And, you know, like I didn't read a lot of comic books, but I always like follow like the movies and the characters and stuff. So, yeah. Um, I, I wasn't the biggest Marvel fan. I got in, I was, I got into WandaVision. I said, I'm going to go back. Uh, Cause I'm staying at home. I'm homeschooling the, my girls and uh, well, two of them. And uh, I went back and I watched all the movies uh, in on Disney Plus in chronological order of the universe, and uh, it just it, there's so many things that you pick up and and mm-hmm. it's just all great and I cannot wait. And the ne- there's three episodes left of WandaVision and they're supposedly going to be an hour long each, which nice just gets me so excited. I cannot wait. So anyway, we won't yeah, spoil re- anything for anyone else. Maybe yep. it's really good. That's all we'll say. <laughs> it is great. Yes. Um, but I guess we're supposedly supposed to talk some wrestling, uh, but I have a question for you. Uh, I know that I know you're a big HBK fan. Um, so, but my question is this, uh, did HBK throw Marty Jannetty through the glass or did Marty Jannetty jump through it trying to escape like the coward that he is? Oh, he definitely jumped through trying to escape. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I knew we were on the same I mean, it's page. It's right there. You go just watch it. You see him just go. Like yeah. he's scared. I yeah. get it. Heenan, <laughs> Heenan told us. He told us that he the coward. Coward tried to escape, for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah. So you you love HBK it was definitely one of the wrestlers that you enjoyed growing up. What's your favorite version of HBK? I heard someone else ask you this, and uh, well, give me your answer, and then I got a response for it. Um. That's hard. I guess like early nineties, like where he was just like the top of his game, just the arrogant heel when he had like Sherry with him for a while. Like that time yeah, was, the that I would have to say my favorite. I mean, I love all of them, but if I had to choose, I would say that time. That definitely was uh, an arrogant, cocky HBK just splitting off. Definitely with Sherry, Sherry who sang his uh, original theme song. Um, mm. And and you, you, looked up to someone like Sherry as well. I was, I was curious to, to know the goofy HBK. Uh, it was later on. It was like when he came back again with DX and triple H and he, he was always goofy. He was always just being yeah. extra goofy. Um, and I was just curious from an HBK fan, like what are your thoughts on that? Like, does that ruin his legacy for you? I don't like goofy Shawn Michaels personally. Um, I don't think it ruins his legacy, but I can understand why you don't like it. I wouldn't say like that was my favorite version of him, but I don't think it ruins his legacy per se. Yeah. Yeah. Goofy never gets brought up. It's always the Attitude Era Sean, the original, well, the DX Sean, 
the one you talked about, which I personally think is the best Sean as well. And I think a lot of it has to do with sensational Sherry, who yeah. is one of the most underrated, not only wrestlers, but managers ever. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, she was so good. Like, And I loved how she could mesh with whoever she was managing and bring out the best of them. She managed some of the best. Too. Savage, HBK, Harlem Heat come to mind quickly. Maybe we can do a top mm-hmm. five on people <laughs> sensational <laughs> Sherry managed. Um, but as far as wrestling goes, uh, you were a fan growing up, obviously. We just touched on that. Um, but how did you get... In, how did you think to yourself, I want to do this? And and how does Jay Lethal in, get involved in that? Um, you know, most people, like, they grow up wanting to be a wrestler. I didn't have that one. I was just always a fan, loved it. And then when I was older, I started watching, like, other wrestling besides WWE. Like, most, you know, when I was a kid, I really only watched that. And some WCW, like, with the Monday Night War, stuff like that. So, and then I started going to a lot of independent shows in my area, just to like see more live wrestling, getting to like learn different people. And that's how I met Jay. And Jay was like, you know, how come you never trained? And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, I kind of think about it. He was like, I think you should. So then he introduced me to Amazing Red where, who first trained me and that's how I got into it. Yeah, that's that house of glory. How underrated is Amazing Red? Oh, he's super underrated. Definitely yeah. one of the best in the world and deserves all the credit that he should get. Yeah, we've we've heard someone else was trained by him, Vanessa. Can you recall who that was or no? I can't either. Somebody else was that we spoke to, but I don't remember. So you go from House of Glory with Amazing Red, uh, great start for yourself. You go into Create a Pro with uh, well, all the greats that are there. Um, mm-hmm. What What resonates most with you what's the difference what what because i they're probably they're both great schools with great trainers and great minds um but you, you're stuck with i guess am i saying that wrong you stuck with creative pro or you wanted to go there why did you leave amazing red i guess is what i'm trying to say um well i had just left wrestling for a while in okay. total um just dealing with a lot of stuff i needed to take some personal time off and then when i came back i just wanted kind of like a fresh start you know, I was, you know, happy at Hog. Amazing Red is great. Like, he helped me out a lot. We still are friends. Um, but I just wanted, like, something new, something different. And Creative Pro is great. Like, Brian Myers, Pat Buck, they're both, you know, very well-known, very wrestling smart. So, like I said, I just wanted a fresh start. And, you know, you can learn so much from different people. Like, you know, I learned a lot from Red, but now I'm learning a lot from Brian and Pat, too. And I feel like that helps a lot when you get to work with different people. You get to learn different things. And you can kind of put it together. Um. Excellent. Uh, I'm, I, I'm stuttering a lot more tonight because when I took all my notes, I put them down and uh, I never got a chance to organize them tonight. So I apologize <laughs> in advance. But your debut match was against the Impact Wrestling Women's Champion, Deanna Perrazzo, um, way back in, let me think if I can remember, um, 2015 maybe-ish? Correct, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, what was your takeaway from that? Because everybody I've spoke to about their first match, they never want to see it again on tape. Uh, is um, that- yeah, I don't know if I would want to watch it again. I mean, it's the first match, but I think it went well overall for first match. Um, you know, she was, a, you know, she was less experienced than she is now. Of yeah. course we all are, but she was still really good back then. And I got a lot of good feedback. I was surprised. A couple of people said, they didn't think that was my first match ever, which I thought was a really nice compliment. They were like, oh, we see you're new, but we didn't think that was your first, first match. So, um, so I did get good feedback. So I always appreciate that. Um, Ariella or Nyx actually means goddess of the night, which is Greek. And you hail from, if I'm correct, the Greek, the Greek heavens. Yes. Um, which I think is amazing. Uh, and I, and Tristan Law's kid, said his his daughter's name is Nix, which I found interesting as well. How did you come up with uh your name, your gimmick, and how why are you the answer to all our prayers? Um well I um a friend recommended like look at Greek mythology and like see if there's like a character you feel like that you would resonate with. So that's where I came with Nix. Um 
I liked what she was about, like the goddess of Nida right up on her. And I was like, I liked the sound of that. It wasn't something like a name that I've heard in wrestling. So I was like, you know, you definitely want something different because I feel like everybody has the same name or you hear like a lot of common things. And then with Ariella, I originally had the name Alana, but then that's when yeah. Rusev and Lana blew up. And again, just like not trying to have like the same sounding name as somebody else. So I was like, okay, I want something different. So I was looking up different A names and that one popped up to me and it meant like lioness of God. And I felt like that was powerful with the goddess of night. And at the time when I was looking at names, it was another name. I can't remember what the name was, but it meant like answered prayer. And then you always hear the saying, like the answer to your prayers. And I'm like, my character is very cocky, arrogant. I haven't heard anybody use that slogan in wrestling. So I was yeah, like, I'm going to run with it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're right. No one has used the answer to your prayers. And I think it would make for a good match for someone if they're a good build up. If, if their moniker insane was uh, like, think, what, what did I, what was I saying? I, I was thinking like uh, answer to your prayers and then, uh, something of your nightmares or something like that. And I was like, man, that go really well against each other. Um, I did talk to someone else about you today too. Colin West um, from Synergy. Uh, <laughs> yes, you host. Great. Yeah, he is great. And uh, I didn't realize this and shame on me because I did a lot of promotion for the, the first ever women's GSI, but you hosted that. That was your first time doing, something of that of uh, hosting uh, and yet you, you got great mic skills and your promo things are great. What did it mean to you to host, um, you know, the first ever women's garden state invitational? Um, I was honored. Like when Colin came to me with the idea, like he said that the same thing, like I have great mic yeah. skills, great promo skills. He felt that I can represent what he wanted the show to mean. And he was like, you know, I want you to be the face of it. And, that meant so much to me because it's like you could have chose anybody for me to be the face of, like you said, the first now annual. Hope so. I know yes. they're going to hopefully do this again. So it just really meant a lot. You know, everybody was like, oh, you're not wrestling. And I'm like, no, you know, which is fine. And like, I still got to be a part of it and the role that he wanted for me. And he felt that I was the best representation, like really meant a lot. Um, and I agree. And that came off phenomenal. Um, I believe Tasha Steeles won that. Yes, so. she did. Um, and it is annual. So hopefully, uh, this time, hopefully maybe you can do hosting and, and be in the tournament. There you go. Just got to win it all and host it at the same time. Yeah, why not? I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll send Colin a text after and, and see what we can work. <laughs> see what we can awesome. work. Uh, for sure. Um, I was looking at, uh, you, some of the people you've wrestled, Nyla Rose, Davian, who I am like, we had her on a long. Uh, I had her on here a long time ago. She's just a phenomenal human being as well. Statlander, yes, just uh, to name a few. But let's say there's someone out there in in the Twitch chat tonight, or someone's watching on YouTube, or or whatever the case may be, and um, they only have one match to watch. That's it. They only get one of your matches to watch. Um, which one would it be, and why? Oh, that's hard. I'm hard. very critical of myself, so I'm like, none. <laughs> um, I would have to say, I guess, um, Chris Stantlander. I feel like she brought out the best of me. She's so good, as you know. Yeah. Um, I got to wrestle her a couple of times, so I guess you could choose which match of her, um, with her, but um, she was definitely one of my favorite opponents. Davian's definitely one, too, but you said I can only choose one, yeah. which is hard for me. Like I said, I'm like, I'm so critical <laughs> of myself, but... Um, I, I've never asked anyone that question before. Um you know, everyone asks like, "What's your favorite match?" This and that, all that, all that rigmarole. But I was like, "Okay, let's say, let's say I only had time for one match. Let's say I was on an island. Let's say I was on Filthy Island. I only get one match to watch. What match would that be? What match would they suggest I watch?" Um, so I thought that was interesting to ask. Um, you now, now we just went through one of the worst years, especially for independent wrestling, uh, maybe ever. Um, and you have a shoot job, you work in TV, your producer, we're going to get to that stuff. Um, but what filled the void of, you know, your, your, your bookings, your, your shows on the weekend that maybe didn't come to fruition because of this pandemic? Like, like, did you watch anything great? You just talked about WandaVision. Did you learn any new talents you could use in or out of the ring? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's definitely like I'm a big TV person, especially yeah. since I work in TV. So there was a lot of shows that I caught up on at the time. 
you know, just try to like, you know, keep in shape as much as I can. The gyms were closed for a while, but try to do like some out home, you know, at home workouts when the weather was better, was out jogging. So, you know, at least try to keep in shape. And now that my, you know, the schools are reopened, trying to at least get back to training if I'm not doing shows, but at least, you know, get some ring time just to fill that void, like you said. Yeah. So it's been hard though. I miss doing shows every week. <laughs> um, so you also wanted to be a producer. What did you want to be first, a wrestler or a producer for wrestling? A uh, producer for wrestling. That's interesting. So, um, and you've done, what have you produced wrestling wise that maybe we have seen or that you're pr- extremely proud of? Um, I haven't really produced anything wrestling wise. Um, okay. Yeah. Most of my producing stuff is just like for the station I work for and stuff like that. I did do, actually, I did produce a, um, an interview with Paul Heyman at my job uh, um, about two years ago. Um, Scott Stanford used to work for um, the station yep. I work at. So um, he had Paul Heyman and so I got to produce that. So that, so I did do something wrestling really. <laughs> and uh, he's one of your idols, especially promo wise for sure. Um, yeah, he's so good. So. Yeah. You got, you got a little uh, Heyman vibe too. When I hear you thank cut something you, on the you. mic for sure. Um, <laughs> now you've had some, uh, You've done some stuff with the WWE as far as uh, I think you were backstage at Evolution, which another another extremely monumental women's mo- moment in women's wrestling. You were at the GSI Women's and now Evolution, um, which was on your birthday, by the way. So yes, yes, that's you know that. I, d- <laughs> I appreciate you knowing this stuff. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm struggling. I I blame my children for my disorganized notes. Shame on them. No, um, you're doing great. <laughs> but what well, I learned something that okay, so there's always extra work like the conga line you talked about. Everyone knows there's you know there's no way Jose and and uh, what's his face before with the bunny that other conga line. There's those. Oh, Adam Rose. Thank yep. you. Yeah, he had. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so people do the extra work there, and then you know people actually they'll get in and they'll they'll get a squash match and get the exposure and that's great but something i learned was that there's actually practice matches that sometimes yes sometimes i didn't know that and uh were you were in one of those yeah i got to do a couple actually which was really so, cool nerve-wracking oh i can uh, imagine i could i would think that's worse almost than, than being... yeah because you know like all the producers are around and you know the wrestlers are around so everybody is watching you and you know it's cool you like some like depending on the time like i know um Scott Armstrong gave us like feedback one of the times I was there, you know, it depends, like I said, it depends on how many matches, how many people, like they'll sit and talk to you about the match. If not, you can probably like, you know, talk to other people, get feedback when everybody's done type of, it was really, yeah, it was definitely nerve wracking. The last one I did was at MSG. So I can just say oh technically goodness. I wrestled at MSG and yes. that's like all I need in my life. <laughs> you should, you should put that on your resume. Don't, just, just write, I wrestled at MSG. Yep, I, I wrestled in that building. Like I grew up there, so um, that was super nerve wracking. You did. That's right. How's the weather? Where you? You're in New York now, right? How's the weather mm-hmm. for you? Yeah, today? it snowed earlier. It's supposed to snow again tonight. Is it? Um, we didn't get it as bad as some other places, yeah. but it's just been snow the past few weeks. I'm yeah. like over it. <laughs> I'm up in Albany, so we're just cold, oh, yeah, pro- cold and frozen uh, rain, freezing rain. So yeah. we were supposed to get snow, but we didn't. It was just. Which is worse. Freezing more. rain's worse, if you ask me. Yeah, because then it makes everything icy and stuff too. Yeah. So. Um, what what can you tell me about now? Okay, let me lead into this a little better. So a uh, couple nights ago, me and my wife watched. It was it was on Tuesday. It was after Tuesday's show. I went upstairs and I watched the Britney Spears documentary, which I don't know the name of it, but it's a Britney Spears something. And I just go watch it. I don't. I think it's on Hulu, maybe. Just go watch it, everybody. I think so yeah, I haven't watched it oh yet. My I gotta God. go back and watch it. Oh my goodness, watch it! I was mesmerized for the entire mm-hmm. time. But it's not my question. I'm not asking you about your, your favorite Britney Spears song, uh, which is something. But anyways, uh, the Britney Spears Invitational. What can you tell me about that? Um, so we all came out to a different Britney song. So you have to tune in and see what song I chose. That's in March, right? Yeah, it's airing March 28th. Um, There's five great people, Corinne Mink, Eddie McQueen, Russell Rogue, um, Brooke Valentine and myself. And the winner gets a future um, opportunity at the 51st state championship. So um, 
it was a great match. You know, it's already taped, so yeah. it's already out there. But, you know, you got to tune in to see who won. Yes. And it was a great time. Like, like I said, great competition. My first match back since March. Yeah. So it was good to actually do a show for once. You know, I know I did the synergy, but I wasn't wrestling on that. So it was like my first time really doing a match since March. So it was nice. The ring rust, not there too much. You know, I've been trying to go to training. So, but it was a really fun time. Great experience. Like I said, great people. Definitely got to tune in when it airs. How, where can we watch that when it airs? It's going to be on IWTV. Perfect. Excellent. Um, how would you describe your style, your in-ring style of Ariella Nix? Um, more of like a brawler, um, some technical, like I'm trying to build that up more. I definitely want to get more technical like once things really get back hopefully to a normal C that we we're used to. Yeah. Um, definitely just a striker. Just want to fight, beat people up. <laughs> not, not too fancy. I don't do anything too crazy. And I just can beat people up. <laughs> I uh, saw that one of your finishers, you got several, but one of them is the rude awakening. Yes. And uh, I was like, nobody uses that anymore. I'm sure there's a ton of people out there that do, but I don't ever see it. Um, and I was like, Oh man, that is one hell of a, finisher and uh you should use it more often than you do yeah i love it and yeah. like you said not a, i've haven't really seen a lot of people use it so that's what made me start doing a lot of it especially like you know a lot of my um arsenal is like neck based so i'm like all right beat up the neck and then just yeah. finish them off with the rude awakening <laughs> um all right now that i've struggled through all the um wrestling stuff uh i want to get to the golden girls oh yeah <laughs> because um, my uh, – I don't have it down here anymore. My sponsor, which is my father, he brought down this bag, this little tote. It was a Golden Girls bag. And uh, so it made me think of the Golden Girls. You're a big Golden Girls fan. RJ City, huge Golden Girls fan. Been yep. on here before, wax and poetic about that. Um, and you're a producer. So I'm going to have you do this for me. I want you to – we're going we're gonna to do a Golden Girls reboot. Okay. And I want you to cast the new Golden Girls. And I don't care who you pick. You can be actors, actresses, wrestlers. Betty White can reprise her role, which I think would be amazing. Yeah. Like, she would definitely have to be She'd in it. She'd have reboot. to be in it, right? You know. Um, yeah. Wow, this is hard. Yeah, I didn't think um, of the answer first either. Person, the first person that came to mind was Corinne Ming because she's as big of a Golden Girls fan. You know, when she first started, she had the Golden Girls gimmick. So it'd probably be like me, her, Betty White, and I don't know who else would be the fourth one. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I gotta think about it. And um, I don't know. Yeah, it's tough. Hmm. That it, is tough. It is. I've never thought about it. I'm like, you know, I like I don't want anybody to touch it because it was like the perfect show. It so is. It is a perfect show. And maybe it shouldn't be remade. Uh, maybe it shouldn't. There's a lot of things that that shouldn't be remade. Um, but mm. for some reason, when I was researching you and uh. You know, you're a producer, and then you were talking about the Golden Girls. You were you were on a, a wrestling gal podcast, and I apologize for the host. I don't remember her name. Um, but you guys were talking about the Golden Girls, and it just like it popped in my head, and I wrote it down. I was like, okay, you want to be a producer? You love the Golden Girls? Let's recast it. Um, so greatest theme yeah, song. I feel like we could do it justice. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be well, just Betty White. <laughs> we'll have to circle back around to it uh, another time. But it, it's one of the greatest theme songs in the world too. Mm -hmm. um that's for sure everyone knows i think i think the golden girls theme song and the fresh prince of bel-air everybody knows every line to yeah sure. i could agree with that um but there is something i learned about you that um i thought oh man this is gonna be a tough interview you're a big yankee fan yep you're a so, who do you like <laughs> i'm a i'm a Sox fan Okay. A Red Sox fan. And uh, not only are you a big Yankee fan, yeah. but you're a big Derek Jeter fan. Um, yeah. That's which, the love of my life. <laughs> man, it, talk about a face you just want to punch. Um, hey, now. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> but You better leave that face alone. <laughs> Um, J-Lo might come after you. And I don't, I don't Wrong really. Wrong one. That's I, Gonzalez. Never mind. Yeah, it's Move okay. It it's all right. They're, they're both fine looking gentlemen. I can, I can, I'm comfortable <laughs> enough to say that. And I don't really have any questions 
Um, I don't really have any question about it. I just thought it was so cool that when you started talking about your love for the Yankees, you started breaking down the Yankees team from 96 to it might have been 96 to 98 or 96 to 2000. And you're going Tino Martinez and Jeter and Posada. And I'm like, oh, my God, I did, this sucks. I, want to talk to <laughs> I mean, I hated the Yankees. Like, Oh, I could imagine. <laughs> so, I missed that team, though. That 98 uh, Yankees was the greatest team in the world. Well, yeah, they were all homegrown. They, were all, they all yeah. came up through the system. And, you know, and then they, they would get people and, and – it's just, and they won, and they won all the time. And yep. at that time, being a Red Sox fan, when they hadn't won yet, I mm -hmm. wanted to. I I don't have any questions. I just thought it was your passion. I think your passion is what came through when I heard you talking about mm -hmm. it. And I think that's uh, extremely cool. Now, um, I do have a to get to a question from uh, Tristan Law, who you were just on or, or had been on before. Uh, mm -hmm. He was very curious if you have given up your love for Hardee's um, and <laughs> I have, knew it was going to be about Hardee's <laughs> and, and had gotten on the White Castle, have, have joined the dark side if you've given up Hardee's. He was very curious. No, I can never give up Hardee's. It sucks. There's none in New York, so I don't get to have it often, but I will never give up Hardee's yeah, ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I don't think I've ever had a Hardee's burger, so I don't. It's good. I can't. I can't relate. And I was going to lead. I was going to lead the show with um, you're in New York. I know Tristan brought this up as well. And someone else did big pizza fan. You love pizza. I think you said you could live off of pizza. And yep. I agree. I could too. I actually want to yeah. open a cold pizza restaurant. So you, you can only get cold pizza because I love cold pizza. Um, but I don't quite know how that would work ethically sometimes, but that's off topic. Mm. But you love pizza, <laughs> and you even talked about you love pineapple on your pizza. I do. I, I know it gets so much hate, and it I don't get, know why. <laughs> everybody hates pineapple on pizza. It's like the new thing. I don't understand because I love it as well. So my question. Yeah, I think people just, like, it's a trend. Like, oh, we're just going to hate on it to hate on it. <laughs> you no, know, we, hate, we hate John Cena. So we hate Roman Reigns. Yeah. Everyone does. I eat pineapple on pizza. Everyone does. Exactly. Nobody ever had a problem with Hawaiian pizza, pizza which is basically <laughs> ham and pineapple. It's, so I guess you get rid of the ham and now everybody's mad. <laughs> it's, that, that was my question. I was like, do you like your pineapple with ham? Do you like your pineapple with bacon? Do you just like your pineapple? Like, I would just, yeah, I like just pineapple. I mean, I can go with the ham and bacon if it's on it, but I would prefer just pineapple. Yeah. I don't understand why people hate on it so much. I know. It's so good. So good. If you don't like pineapple in general, that's one thing. But people that like pineapple but don't like it on the pizza. Oh. It's like people just – it's like they just want their voice heard. They'll just tweet it out yeah, just to be exactly heard. It. Just makes me want to – makes me want to uh, – just makes me so mad. <laughs> Sorry, um, more pineapple for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, lo I love – I'll even eat the pine – I'll even eat the Hawaiian pizza. That was the thing. Like everyone hated on it. And I was like, Hawaiian pizza is the best. So they're act so they're hating on the fact that it's just pineapple. Yeah. Wow, people really have no life. <laughs> really. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. Every day I just dislike the people. Anyways. Um your gear. Your gear is extreme. We I have become a gear uh fanatic. We've had uh who who'd we have on here? Clint Stevens, who does gear. Um the last your gear is hot who who does your gear um i've been going to this girl named Lori. her moniker is no gimmick gear no, no gimmick. she does a lot of the stuff like for creative pro guys like now like with max and other guys on AEW. so like her stuff is going to be on tv which is really cool for her and yeah. so it's like she's made the last couple of things i've had awesome yeah i've uh, i've learned that the the community of gear makers is tight knit pun intended yeah for sure. Yep. Um, besides the Britney Invitational that we have coming up in March, which I can't wait to see what song you come out to. Is it the same? It's a good one. It is a good one. Um, I would make a guess, but I would really get busted on by knowing too many Britney songs. <laughs> it's um, okay. She's great. <laughs> she is, but I did just watch the documentary, which I highly suggest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got to go and watch it. Yeah, it's good. 
Um, but besides that, uh, where else? Do we got anything else coming up or? Um, I have a couple of things. They haven't really been announced yet. Um, you know, a couple of people have hit me up like, Hey, I'm running this or whatever. Um, nothing's really formally set. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's hard just with everything with COVID and stuff. So, but definitely stay tuned. Cause I do like, you know, I've been in talks with some people, so a couple of good things coming up, but it just hasn't like been announced yet. Um, and uh, what I usually do at the end of, of every show, well, first I'll ask Vanessa. Vanessa, did I, uh, do you have anything to ask? I know I stumbled over everything tonight, but I think I, uh, I think I managed to steer it in, in a manner, in a well done manner. Vanessa, you got anything? No, I think you covered my basis that I had. Yeah, I forgot to. I usually send you my notes too, and I forgot to do that. I'm so far. You've been done that in so long. I've I know just given up. it's getting it's getting so <laughs> hard here. I have three daughters, Ariella, and it's just and they're on vacation this week. Not only my home's mm-hmm. going to, but they're off on February break, which I I say let them go through February break. We can get done sooner, but right. um, <laughs> it's just crazy here. But anyways. Um, what we like to do at the end of every show is I'm going to give you the mic. You do have um, extremely phenomenal mic skills, and uh, <laughs> you can put over anything you want. You can bury anyone you want. Uh, <laughs> I I don't care. The floor is yours. I will not interrupt. You're, you're unscripted, so go ahead. Um. Oh, I don't – damn, putting me on the spot. Yeah, um, Vanessa yells at I me too know, for this. <laughs> um. I don't really have anybody to bury, which is nice. I don't have no beef or no issues with me, so that's always a good thing. If you have issues with me, then you have sorry issues. for your luck, because <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, you know, if you want to like support me, you can always follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Ariella Nix. I have merch, Ariella Nix, bigcartel.com. You would look great in an Ariella Nix shirt or a hat, or you want an 8x10. Look at the space. You want one. So, <laughs> you do. You yes. know, definitely check it out. Support your girl. You know, I am the answer to your prayers. And that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking we buy an 8x10, Vanessa, and we send it to Derek Jeter. Whew. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> right? Probably, yeah. But, um, yeah, you've been you've been a pleasure to have on. I apologize. I did a lot of stumbling and stuttering tonight, which I don't no, normally do. Um, and uh, as Randy Jackson said in American Idol, you should never address the fact that you stumble and just go through it. But oh well. Um, we got all your links, your big cartel, your Twitter, all that. We got the Britney Spears coming up. You still like Hardee's. You love pineapple on pizza and – I suppose you can continue to like the Yankees and I won't hold it against you. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Stay warm, stay safe and stay strong. We'll see you around. Mm. Thank you for having me. This is great guys. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Anytime. Oh, look at that.